Welcome to the PharmaSource podcast. A very warm welcome to another edition of the PharmaSource podcast. Today, delighted to be joined by two guests from Terumo. So firstly, we have Marco Chiado Piat, president of the Pharmaceutical Solutions Division at Terumo and also by Anil Basimi, Vice President of Strategy and Marketing. So a very warm welcome to Anil and to Marco. We're looking forward to chatting with you on the podcast today. Thank you for hosting us, Chris, and and, and hi to everyone connected. Thanks, Chris, and hello to everyone. To start with, Marco, perhaps you can give us an introduction to Terumo as, as a business and also to your role in the Pharmaceutical Solutions Division, please. Sure, Chris, with pleasure. Terumo Group, for those of you who don't uh, know it, are not familiar with that, is a global medical device company. Uh, I would say uh, mid to large size medical device company based in Japan. Uh, In in our mission, we contribute to society through healthcare. And this uh, we do through three companies. That's the way we organize ourselves. We call the three large chunks companies. Uh, which are in turn divided in eight divisions operating in over 160 countries and regions around the world. And we provide solutions to patients in a variety of medical settings and to the pharmaceutical industry as well, with uh, over 50,000 products and services for the different divisions. As part of one of the companies, the Terumo Medical Care Solutions Company, us, the Pharmaceutical Solutions Division, that we also call PSD with an acronym, is a leading manufacturer of uh, injection solutions, primary container, infusion therapy devices, general drug delivery devices. And uh, of course, it's going to be the subject of our chat today. We also offer integrated CDMO, Contract Development Manufacturing Organization Services, for uh, parental drugs to our pharmaceutical customers. Uh, The CDMO integration at Terumo, uh, I would call it a combination of different things in one single partner. We offer multiple kinds of activities such as uh, we provide the primary containers, so a polymer prefillable syringes or customized containers. Uh, We manufacture that, We, uh, we actually act upon the dry device combination development itself. We perform the aseptic fill and finish. We can assemble the pre-fill syringe into other injectors or additional safety devices. We support our customers with regulatory support and we support them in the commercial language. So we can really say that we do offer an integrated ser- CDMO service to our customers uh, based on uh, on their needs, of course. we I think we are the only player on the market where all these elements, these operations, especially the primary package and fill and finish together are combined in uh, one single panel or like somebody says, one-stop shop. So we, for, for us at uh, Terumo Pharmaceutical Solutions Division, the integration is not just a buzzword. It's, uh, it's a reality because uh, these kind of operations are taking place under one roof in one location, hence also limited the needs for transportation and uh, mitigate a bit the logistical nightmare that some pharmaceutical companies have to go through. Thank you, Marco, for explaining how CDMO service fits in with the remainder of the business and obviously talking through the positioning. That's very helpful. We're nearly a third of the way through 2024, unbelievably. How has 2024 been for you as a business so far? For us, 2024 has just started because As a Japanese-based company, our fiscal year ends uh, at the end of March. Um, But jokes apart, I would say that uh, the last uh, four months have been very good for us. Very good means that uh, we've seen uh, continuous growth. And when I say continuous growth, it means, uh, first of all, in line with the the previous years. I'm uh, I'm here at the Romo since seven years, and uh, I'm pleased to to say that uh, uh, I witnessed the success of, uh, of this division uh, along many years with a continued uh, growth. 
And this is continuing also in uh, in uh, 2024. When I talk about continuous growth is not only about numbers, about financials, which of course are important for us as for everybody else, uh, but especially in the kind of relationships that we are establishing with our partners and customers uh, in terms of the capabilities that we put in place and, uh, and by which we support our partners and customers. So in this sense, I would say, 2024 has started in a great way, exactly along the lines by which we had closed 23 and 22. Continuous growth in capabilities, offering solutions provided to our customers, and hence a continued increase of the positive impact that we are having through our pharmaceutical customers on the patients worldwide. Thank you very much. Anil, over to you. Many CDMO players are investing in increasing capacity and capabilities. What are you as a business doing in this area? Is there any significant news that you would like to highlight? Thanks, Chris, for touching up on this uh, very important market trend, you know, where we see the outsourcing, especially for the injectable drugs, is expected to increase. I think many of the pharma companies are making those decisions to reduce the risk and also increase flexibility on their side. So to address this, uh, we have announced uh, last year a significant uh, investment project in our uh, Kofu plant in Japan for the CDMO uh, capabilities. Uh, we are cons constructing a completely new building and also have a fully automated uh, fill and finish equipment and uh, device assembly equipment in the plant. Uh, and this project will result uh, uh, actually in doubling our uh, capacity over the coming years. Uh, but I think this is also fruit of uh, the collaboration we have with our customers. Uh, and of course, as Marco already alluded, you know, uh, the foremost thing in our minds is always the health and the comfort of the patients, you know, and how can we improve that uh, uh, working closely with our uh, pharma customers. Anil, you just mentioned, obviously, the Kofu plant in Japan. How many plants do you have as a business and, and where are they located? We have three plants in Japan. Uh, just to uh, uh, make you familiar with uh, some of the cities uh, of uh, Japan where, where uh, we operate, uh, we have a plant in uh, uh, Fujinomiya, uh, in Kofu and in Yamaguchi. Uh, and each of these plants have uh, different uh, capabilities. Uh, uh, and I think uh, one of the unique capabilities uh, Marco briefly touched upon uh, is really the end-to-end -end services, you know, starting from a, a design and a development and manufacturing of a primary packaging, like a prefills range, and going through the fill and finish process uh, and integrating them with a device like an auto injector or a safety device, and also having the capabilities to do the secondary packaging, maybe in a blister pack or a, uh, a unit boxes or in cartons. Uh, I, I think. Our story of uh, being an integrated CDMO is uh, very simple. We say the customers can come to us with an API and actually walk out with the final drug product, which is ready to deliver the drug to the patients. Um, and I think with this integrated capabilities, what we can definitely help our customers is to reduce the risk uh, in their project, uh, reduce the time to market. And I think more importantly, if you also look at from a sustainability point of view, Having one partner and doing all the operations on one site will also uh, lead to a lower uh, 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 carbon footprint. Uh, so this is uh, something uh, we can uh, 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 take pride of and also uh, really help uh, the customers and ultimately the patients uh, uh, to get to access to the uh, uh, life-saving drugs and improve their quality of life. Thank you. And you know, I love the point about customers walking in with an API and walking out with the final drug product as part of that integrated offering. A question to both of you, you're talking about where the activities and the plants are at the moment. What about intentions to expand your footprint and, and presence in, in other regions of the world? What does that look like? Our intention is definitely to expand our footprint on this industry, uh, which means expand collaborations with the uh, pharmaceutical partners worldwide. Uh, one, one of the key points of our offering is what you just discussed with Anil, the integrated service that allows our customers to minimize logistical nightmares. But uh, should our customer require specific proximity to their plants, 
obviously we will we, we will consider uh, our priority is, is very clear is to satisfy the needs of our partners and so should future customers require specific proximity to their facilities for uh, whatever kind of reasons including but not only sustainability we are of course open to accommodate this possibility uh, I think it's very important to, to state this because uh, internally we have a motto uh, like, like everybody else, no, no surprise and no, no, no specific uh, uh, trademark on this. But we say patient-centric in thinking and customer-centric in actions. Uh, part of our actions is accommodating the needs of our customers also logistically, hence the possibility to expand our food geographic footprint to Europe or the US or where the, our customers will uh, support us and require us to support them is definitely in our list of to do's. Thank you, Marco. I think it's also the question of uh, how do we support our customers uh, who are actually global, you know, uh, also our, our existing customers who supply their product, uh, which is uh, uh, filled and finished in, in Japan uh, sites, but they supply to the global markets. And here we have experience uh, going through the audits of uh, regulatory agencies like uh, uh, FDA or EMEA. Uh, so uh, even uh, though we have facilities in Japan, but we do address uh, global uh, uh, companies and global markets. So this is also a kind of uh, uh, expansion of uh, 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 geographies and also the footprint to help customers to launch the product uh, uh, on a global scale. That makes perfect sense. Who is the ideal customer for you to work with? Is there a particular phase of development um, or manufacturing or a particular specialism? Good question, Chris. I think uh, our focus is very much on the uh, injectable drugs uh, and also maybe uh, particularly on the biotech or biosimilar uh, uh, drugs. Uh, and also we are targeting uh, drugs in the phase uh, two or phase three. Uh, and also given our capabilities and our understanding of the primary packaging and also the drug container interactions, uh, I think, for example, silicon sensitive drug molecules, because most of the biotech drugs are complex and are sensitive. So here, uh, having that understanding what kind of primary packaging solutions we can offer I think uh, 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 that's a, a very interesting area. Uh, and in addition to that, uh, uh, most of the customers are also targeting to bring those therapies from a hospital to home environment. That means combining those prefillable syringes uh, with an auto injector or with a, a safety device, uh, 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 kind of drug delivery devices. So that will be an ideal, uh, 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 I would say, candidates uh, for us to really offer this end-to-end uh, 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 <clears throat> -end service uh, to help them really uh, launch the product, which is a finished uh, drug product, which is uh, ready to be uh, injected to the patients. Changing tact slightly, Marco, the industry is very focused on reducing scope three emissions. Indeed, for, for us, this is a key theme within CDMO Live in a few weeks time. As a business, how are you supporting this drive to sustainability? Uh, what are your plans for reducing customers' carbon footprint, etc.? I think it's a it's a very hot topic, a very relevant topic for the industry, not only CDMO, but uh, in many industries, of course. But in, in healthcare, uh, we all feel the need to contribute, and the requests by our partners to contribute to this. We as the Roma Group have uh, established as a corporation uh, sustainability activities and key themes to play our part in resolving issues related to uh, uh, healthcare society and global environment uh, protection. Uh, li like everybody else, we like to, uh, to split the type of activities and commitments that we take to ourselves and to our partners into uh, three chunks. Uh, reduction, maintenance, and uh, increasing. On the on the reduction side, of course, the general engagement that we've taken is uh, reducing the environmental burden that we that we bring. And more specifically, we are committed to uh, uh, absolute uh, emissions reduction 
uh, JG emissions by 50% within 2030. And still within 2030, uh, the unit emissions of uh, JG uh, should go down by 60%. And, uh, and in addition, we've committed to the 1.5 degree pathway uh, on our side. On the maintenance side, uh, we intend to uh, reach carbon neutrality by 2040. That's the engagement that we made public. And on the increase side, specifically, we're working on increasing the use of electric power coming from renewable sources. And, and the specific target here is uh, about 50% by 2030. Uh, I, I, I think it's important to underline that uh, these are not just uh, corporate goals shared. <laughs> and there's, a, there's a significant amount of people working on this, not just a, a, a small department uh, uh, setting up uh, and public, making public our targets and our achievements. I think there's a strong wind in this direction within the room, within the different cohorts of associates. It's very important because we're doing this for the environment. We're doing this to support our pharmaceutical customers because they request it, but we are also doing it ourselves. For our families, we are mothers and fathers, so we are thinking and acting for the company, but also for each of our families. That's great to hear. And, and thank you for breaking it down into those categories and, and talking about the specific commitments. That's really great to hear. Marco, what's one market trend that our pharma source listeners should have front of mind for the second half of 2024 and then moving into 2025? I'll try to provide my perspective, but uh, I would say each of the listeners is, uh, is the best qualified because each of us from our angle uh, see specific trends. What I can witness is, uh, or my feeling, I would say the competition uh, among uh, biosimilar products to be launched on the market is increasing uh, every day and every month. Uh, and I don't think this is going to be a trend only for the second half of 24 or 25, but it's going to continue throughout uh, the years ahead of us. Uh, therefore, I think there's a, a big pressure and the pressure will be increasing on pharmaceutical customers to reduce the timelines for bringing new products or new biosimilars from development to market. And in turn, this pressure will be passed on to the CDMO players, the CDMO operators like us and others. Um, but at the same time, not only we feel increased needs for speed, but also increased expectations on quality, type of services, and increasing also ability to cope with possible disruptions due to geopolitical reasons. We got many examples recently, climatic, and so on and so forth. So I suppose that in order to be successful, the CDMOs that uh, will uh, emerge uh, from the group will be the ones very able, uh, more than others, to be resilient, stable against these external phenomena, and continue to offer increased speed for pharmaceutical customers and increased quality uh, in order to uh, enhance, in turn, our pharmaceutical customers' possibility to win in the uh, biosimilar competition. If I may compliment to uh, what Marco said, I think just uh, giving a different spin from a Terumo CDMO perspective, we have been operating this uh, uh, integrated CDMO uh, uh, business model for almost 20 years. So it's uh, uh, we can claim that we already have a significant experience. Uh, so whether the customer is working on an innovative uh, biotech drug or is it a biosimilar drug or could be a life cycle uh, management moving from a vial to a PFS, there could be different scenarios, but I think our wealth of experience and the capabilities actually will help. I think one of the key uh, points which Mark touched upon is uh, time to market because ultimately all the pharma customers are looking at how can we bring those uh, uh, cutting edge therapies to the patients faster. And this is where I think uh, with our end to end services, we can really help them 
uh, and uh, uh, and ultimately really uh, make sure that we play a role in uh, improving the quality of uh, life for the patients. Thank you, Anil. Okay, so one final question. What advice would you give to biotechs or to pharma companies when partnering with a contract development and manufacturing company? What are the recurring problems that you see and, and how would you fix those problems? A million dollar question. Uh, Chris, I'm, 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 I don't know if I'm qualified to give uh, advice to biotechs or pharma companies. Uh, what I can say is that uh, uh, we all know that there are many risks uh, associated with, uh, with the process of uh, bringing a drug product to the market. And, and I think it's important for uh, pharmaceutical customers to, to always try to connect the four P's, so the patient, the product, the process, and the partner, and, uh, and hopefully do it right uh, for the first time and continuing with a, a winning relationship when they find one. So the the, the extra efforts uh, that uh, that we put in helping our partners to solve uh, issues and ultimately bring products successfully uh, to the market is what uh, can make the difference. Uh, when you when you say what are the recurring problems that I that I see. Uh, I, I think the recurring problem is that problems always arise. We know that problems arise on any path towards the market. So the selection of the CDMO and the selection and the deep knowledge about the people that work in a specific CDMO is key. Uh, so the only small suggestion that I can give to pharmaceutical potential customers and biotechs is... Uh, spend time to select the time spent uh, in scrutinizing potential candidates in uh, getting to know the people the processes the motivations the empathy that uh, these professionals at a cdmo put into a collaboration project is uh, is very well spent because problems we can anticipate a good portion, but further problems arise on any path towards the market. So the quality of the people, the quality of the values that uh, are embedded in the CDMO processes and offering by a certain CDMO versus another one are going to be key. So spend sufficient time, maybe extra time to select your proper partner, because if you find a good CDMO partner uh, is first of all, very likely to help you solve the problems along the way to market. And uh, if uh, the selection has been the right one, probably your CDMO partner will be a partner for a very long time for multiple projects. Thank you. That's great advice. That's been a fascinating conversation with Marco and with Anil. So thank you both very much for your insight today. Terumo are one of our sponsors at CDMO Live on the 13th of June. So looking forward to more insight uh, in a few weeks' time. Thanks again for your uh, for your support. Just before we conclude, any final words that you'd like to give to our audience today? First of all, thank you, Chris, for hosting us. And uh, thanks uh, to the audience uh, for listening to this podcast. And uh, we are uh, super excited to be part of the CDMO Live uh, event. And are looking forward for many interesting discussions and a start of collaborations from our side. Same, same on my side. So first of all, thanks for hosting us, and thanks for our collaboration. Uh, what, what we what we said here is uh, what we feel and what we think about the CDMO world. Uh, I think uh, not only we suggest uh, pharmaceutical companies to get to know well their CDMOs, including us. But we are generally interested in uh, in getting to interact with more pharmaceutical and, uh, and biotech uh, professionals because we we give and we take, we contribute and we learn. So um, come and see us, listen to us, but come and see us uh, whenever the opportunity arises. We'll be happy to discuss with you and get to know you. Thank you both very much. Thanks, Marco. Thanks, Anil. And we look forward to hearing more on the 13th of June at CDMO Live. Thank you very much. 
Join us at CDMO Live on June the 13th. All you need to do to register is head to pharmasource.global slash CDMO Live. We look forward to seeing you there.